Hey guys, Chris here with Giving Project Nerf. You asked for it, so here we go. Under 2.0 mod guide. Let's get at it. Alright, so here we are with the Elite 2.0 Phoenix. And first thing I want to do is send out a special thanks. And a plug to uh, one of my all-time favorites, uh, Chelo Lorino. You guys know him as Captain Xavier. Uh, because he really helped us out with his critical review of this blaster. In pointing out uh, areas where the solvent welding are. I know there's a post or two down in here that has solvent weld on it. So we already know where we're going to have to deal with that. So I'm going to put the link to his video in the description box. Definitely check out Captain Xavier's critical review. So without further ado guys, let's get the screws out of it. There aren't that many in this blaster. And apparently they're silver. For whatever reason, there's always one that wants to fight with you. Or at least with me. Guess it would help if we took the, uh, the battery cover off here. Can't say as I see that as a big upgrade. Moving the batteries to the front of the blaster, but it does allow for a much more attractive uh, side profile of the blaster. That's one of the things that I have always hated about the Strife is its asymmetrical deal going on here with the battery tray and the motor cover sticking off. So uh, the Phoenix, like the turbine, is a very, very attractive blaster from a side profile. Um, it's got the same crappy, cheap jam door on it, but you guys know all this stuff already. So anyway, I said, we know we're going to have to do with some solvent weld right in there. So let's see if we can do anything with it here.
finally, yay, had solvent weld on a post right here underneath the uh, faux in-strike mount, giving me a fit. Well, we're in, here's the same, pretty much the same horrible magazine release design. Um, that in there. This is on a big, big compression spring. Scared to find out how bad the handle is to try to open. Trigger. Okay. Trigger. So far, does not appear to be any welding in the gray portion of the handle. There was not, it's just clipped. Once you get under there and work it a little bit, it, uh, it comes right out. Here is the uh, mechanical lock. Oh my goodness, they put a screw in it. Look at that. To hold, of all things, the mechanical lock down for the uh, magazine that stops you from revving the blaster if there's no mag in it. So, obviously, we're going to get rid of that. And that's going directly to the can that we don't need it. Here's the rev button itself that actually activates the switch. You can see what's going on here. If I can set that back down in there for a second. Like so. What happens when you pull the rev button, obviously it hits this angle right here and slides down and activates the switch. That's why everything is so stiff and horrible. Okay, this has, this orange plate's going to have to come out because our wires run underneath it. So, see if we can get it out of here without busting too many clips off. Funny that they all go different directions. So we're going to try to get under it a little bit. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Wish the whole blaster came apart that easy. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay, there is one more screw in this orange section of the blaster. If there's any luck, there's no solvent weld on it. I know it's clipped. There we go. Pick up my screwdriver that I dropped. Okay, so. Yeah, that sucks. I kind of broke my little in strike tab off. We'll glue a prop, we'll glue an orange one back in there. Oh, one of the solid ones with no spring. Oh, let's see here. So let's see if we can get under it this way and pop the clips on the far side of the shell. I'm going to put a bit of that. Let's see if we can do it again. If we can get under it right here. Hopefully you can see that. Up real high, well, right where the wire came through. If you can get under there a little bit. There we go. Give it a little twist and it pops. There it is. Okay, so the shell uh, we're going to pull this orange plate out too because we're going to go ahead and paint this one because it's going to a friend of mine. So let's see if we can go ahead and get the orange plate out of this side. See if we can get under here and work a few of these little tabs. I just use a little small screwdriver and apply some pressure and sometimes they let go. 
Sometimes they're a bigger pain in the butt. I think I brought that tab with me, but it's got plenty. So, not too concerned about that. Okay, at the loss of only one tab, I find that acceptable. We are going to push the tab out of there so it doesn't come out later and rattle around inside the shell because we're going to put this back on so we have our nice orange backing for the Elite 2.0. Tell the place apart the one on the painted side of the blaster or the side of the blaster we're used to working with down has this uh, area here which looked like they were originally gonna it's uh, for the uh, slide to go in so you can always tell which one of the orange plates goes on which side of the body so that's not gonna be a problem or we'll get to sand in that here directly. Let's see what we got to do to get in here. I see one, two, three, four tabs. And heaven knows how much salt and welding. Alright guys, I am super smart. I've been prying away at this thing and there is a screw in the center of it. Let's see if we take the screw out if we have any better results. Hey, look at that. Okay, yep. I admit it, I'm stupid. There's another one in this corner that I've been wrestling with. I just grabbed it and went to work with my tools. All of that because I was in such a hurry to take it apart that I didn't look to see that there was two screws in this case right here. So, a lesson learned there. Uh, you know, look something over a little bit before you try to take it apart. Fortunately, all this is hidden well inside the blaster, so any roughed up edges, which there are several at this point, uh, aren't going to show. Alright, so the battery tray just lifts out. This little guy right here that goes on this post where my finger's at is the thermistor. Barrel actually lifts out. Yay, something comes out of it easy. Um, I don't see any clips on the front of this one. There are two clips on the back side. Maybe there are clips on the front. Yes, there are. They're way deep down in there. So what we're going to do is put a little upward pressure on it. Let's see if we can defeat those. And I think I got those front ones. as before, try to get under it a little bit and there we go. Okay. So uh, get rid of that. Don't even really think we need to keep this. We do need to keep that nub though, so we'll have to hang on to the battery container. Let me just rip the damn wires off of it. Um, the rails can stay on. Alright, flywheels. See if we can get. Okay. 
Now well, we got the cage out and uh, see if we can pop these flywheels off. All I have to do is try to get under with a little screwdriver on either side. These closed in cages do not make that very easy. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the dart guides out of the front of it, right here where my finger's at, those little... And that'll make us a little more space, and they have to come out to accommodate our bigger flywheels anyway. Okay. Now let's see here. A screwdriver under here, my little thing under here. I'm gonna pop this flywheel off. Yep, no problems there. I see what I was saying about taking the tab out, you can kind of get your screwdriver under there a little bit nicer. And pretty much standard and strike flywheels. There's nothing remarkable about those. Take my little hammer. Hey, the motors came out of this one. Um, on the turbine, the whole case kind of exploded and had that problem. Okay, so we're going to get rid of these pieces of crap. Hey, let's see what do we got over here. Put a set of honey badgers in it. It's, we like honey badgers. Okay, so I always lay mine out right the direction the dart's gonna go. And my first motor I put in up top, okay, which is gonna be actually the bottom motor over here, but I put it in while it's facing me up top with the red dot facing forward. Now you don't have to, it doesn't really matter. But it's just how I do it, and uh, typically speaking, my polarity checks go exactly as I expect them to every time. And these motors are going to be a very, very tight friction fit in this cage, guys. So take your time and just push them down in there. You can see I'm using a uh, pretty good size channel lock. There we go. I'm going to be careful not to damage the motor. That's pretty good. And obviously, our second one we're going to put in here facing the opposite way. I try to stay up on the edge of the motor can when I do this. As much as I can. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes you have to take a grip for more sensitive regions and that's the reason that you just got to be so patient and so careful when you're doing it like this and that motor is almost seated it's so close there we go both motors are seated now in the let's see let me open my magic drawer here and see what I got I got a set of Phoenix wheels. I really hate those, um, to be honest. And they're going to be a little bit big, which is part of the reason I hate them. They don't fit a great many applications, which means that we're going to go to Old Reliables here, my containment crew Inferno wheel. All right, guys, sorry about that. My camera battery died. Anyway, we were working on the cage, which I've already finished this assembly. We had our honey badger motors in. I put the Inferno flywheels in. Now, this side of the box, if you would, that these things come in, you have to cut away. I'll see if I can get it on film for you here. All of the faux cage on that side to make room for those bigger wheels. Um, and then I cut out this post. Uh, that the one screw went in that I just completely missed when I was taking it apart. 
um, to help make a little more room for a battery in there. Um, and we should be able to fit the uh, 950 uh, out of darts battery in here. You can see I've started to wire it. I've got my XT60 uh, connector already wired up here. And uh, I got some wires running to the blaster. The shield's back on. The reason this green rag's here is I painted it um, earlier, and uh, I don't want to mar up the paint. Moving back to this section here, the handle. Let's see if I can get it a little more centered here for you. There we go. Um, you can see big epoxy putty mount uh, for our gearbox. We're going to go full auto on this thing. Now, I'm using one of these style of gearbox uh, that comes in like the select fire kit um, anybody that saw my review of the v6 kit knows that I've killed a couple of the v2 and 3 kits now but I had the pushers left over uh, so I'll just use this pusher and what I've done I'll take the motor out here for a second is I've made the epoxy putty mount in such a way that we can then screw it down with a screw here and one there into the into the epoxy putty and they go quite a long ways probably like half an inch um, and you can see all that drops just fine and then we would hold it in place and push our motor in just like that and uh, obviously that's a little far forward we want to start it all the way back there we go um, and everything is sitting in there and and uh, and riding pretty good so uh, handle moving on to that I'm using the original lock and rev trigger. Let me get those out for you uh, to actuate our good size micro switch here. So it works pretty well as it did with stock. And then space was an issue. You can see I modified the trigger. There was a tab sticking off here I cut off, and then there was like a little hook-shaped thing up there that I cut off of it as well. Um, and we'll use this uh, smaller switch for our pusher motor. Um, but all of that should work uh, quite well. So anyway, I'm going to go finish wiring it up. You can see I've routed the wires out of the box, down low into the mag well. Uh, so uh, it won't interfere with the magazine. I have it right here. You can see the mag slides in there nicely. All right, it's not hitting any wires. Everything's nice and clear. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish wiring it up. Uh, anything else to get you guys caught up? Yes, this side of the handle. Okay, you can see that I had to take the flat areas out right here where my fingers are uh, to make room for this big switch. And then I ground it to smithereens down on the inside here. There was a... This was the post. There was a screw that went into there. Uh, so that's a goodbye screw. Um, but it clips together, you know, just nicely. So it's no problems there. Um, so yeah, lots of uh, fitting and shaping and connecting everything together. And then when I put it together, this wouldn't, uh, wouldn't actuate the switch. So let me see if I can just slide it together here for a second. I have to route these wires up and out of that area for a minute. Alright, let's see if I can hit it. Because there's a little post in there that is still intact. There we go. Hear that? Very clicky rev trigger response. Sorry, didn't mean to bump the camera. Alright, now, since we don't have the pusher arm on top of the trigger, little post right there, matter of fact, let me take the handle back off so you can see it better. Get these out of the way. Right here on top of the trigger, what we're going to do is cut this green post down flush with the trigger and then put one of the large top hat screws, like a strife has, uh, to hold that trigger down flush so that it actuates our switch every time. Uh, so, anyway, I'm going to get about doing that, finish up the wiring, and uh, see if we can get it back together. Alright, well we got it uh, We got it all together here, and uh, I've got my little chrono out here. Now I'm not very good with this one because I always mess up the angle, but we're going to 
try to get some chrono numbers off of this blaster and see what happens. 119. 122. 121. 124. 113. 119. 124. That was a pair of them, and uh, we got 123 off of that. So we're hitting in the uh, the low 120s here on average. Uh, that's super cool. Uh, let me load the mag, and we'll do a rate of fire test. All right, I'm going to do a rate of fire test. Watch that corner. Uh, I've got a fully loaded Worker 22 in here, so let's see what happens. Empty mag. Um, that's a pretty nice rate of fire for uh, HVZ style stuff. I think it's probably around six, but I'll flash the numbers on the screen for you. All right, guys. Well, we've got it all done and back together here. And uh, you can see that uh, it's got a black paint job, a lot of the arms showing. And I uh, did something with the uh, mag release, which my friend does a lot of 3D printing, so I'll let them 3D print something to go over this lever. However, at this point, it will gravity drop uh, anything bigger than a six clip. So that is uh, a big improvement. And uh, all in all, I really, really like it. Um, our battery compartment has uh, enough room to put the out of darts 950 milliamp uh, Turnigy graphene lipo in it. And the, uh, the pusher kit that we put in here, this is not the fastest rate of fire in the world. Um, these type of kits were designed to run with the board for the select fires, and uh, those have voltage regulators that ramp the voltage up and things like that, so just run it direct off the battery. Uh, you don't get the best rate of fire in the world, but that being said, it's not horrible. So there we have it, guys. I'm very pleased with the way it came out. It works nicely. It looks cool. And uh, I think my friend's going to like it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe button. Smash that notification button as we got some more cool content coming up, along with another giveaway here pretty soon. So you don't want to miss out on that. Uh, you know, throw us a like. Send a comment. Fan mail address is in the description box below. Guys, until next time, this is Chris for Project Nerf saying have a blast.